You might never need a graphics card again. MSI Afterburner is back and NVIDIA drops prices on everything. Well, let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Thursday, April 20th, 2023. And we're going to start off today talking about a topic that excites me quite a bit, and that is integrated graphics on chips, which the 780M from AMD is one of the most hotly anticipated iGPUs that have come out in some time. And ETA Prime got their hands on this and put it through its paces. We got to see some benchmark numbers coming out of it. I highly encourage that you check out their video, linked in the video description. This is a full gaming laptop version on the 7940HS, which has eight cores, 16 threads, a 780M iGPU. It also has an RTX 4060 in the laptop itself, as well as 32 gigabytes of DDR55 RAM. But this video only encompasses the scopes of how does that integrated GPU perform when it's put through its paces. And what we see is that the 780M doesn't go up to three gigahertz at stock settings. It only goes up to 2.8. However, based on synthetic scores, it's about 12 to 15% faster than the 680M. Additionally, there's a few early driver issues that are going on with it, so it didn't perform flawlessly in all of the testings, but you can look at the numbers that are on the screen right now, and this is insane. This is exactly what I would love to have in my handheld console. This is likely not what we're gonna get in something like the Asus ROG Ally, and I'll talk about that in a second, but you can see CSGO, 1080p high, 130 FPS, Fortnite, 78 FPS at 1080p medium, Horizon Zero Dawn, 1080p performance mode, 69 FPS, Cyberpunk 2077, 1080p medium low mix, 70 FPS. This is something that I have seriously wanted. The Steam Deck is underpowered for my use case, which is playing AAA games in bed. And if I can get at 720p medium, 60 FPS, I will be very happy in those games that I'm using my handheld for. But the difference here though, is the 780M that's in this laptop Top is at 80 watts of performance, whereas typical handhelds are between 15 and 35. So we're likely gonna get underperformers if they do have the 780M just based on thermal limitations. But hopefully if you downscale the resolution to 720p, you could still be getting really good performance out of the 780M. Again, check out ETA Prime's video for the full lowdown on that GPU, but it looks to be very exciting. And MSI Afterburner is getting an exciting update. You might remember that it stopped getting updated due to a whole lot of payment problems processing issues between MSI and the developer who was based out of Russia. However, it looks like that's been resolved because the 4.6.5 stable release has finally come out. This is the first stable release since December 3rd of 2021 with some beta releases coming out. Since then, this one covers RTX 40 series graphics cards, 13th gen Intel, the new Ryzen chips as well. This has not been officially rolled out into Afterburner until now. And the big question surrounding this was whether or not the developer actually ended up getting paid, to which they responded in this tech power up article in the comments saying I cannot comment current status of past year's licensing issues on public sorry the same applies to MSI they won't be commenting on it publicly that's a mutual decision of both parties I can only say that currently the project is still alive and both sides will try to do everything to keep it alive in future so it looks like MSI afterburner is not dead it's still here it's going to keep marching forward it looks like both sides are happy with the resolution to at least continue to publish it whether or not past licensing issues have been resolved remains unclear. And it's always unclear whether or not Reese gives me UFD deals. That's just part of the business. Yo, welcome back to UFD deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. I'm Reese, your resident deal guy who spends hours of his day looking for the best deals for you. And starting off today, we have this Patriot Viper Venom DDR5 RAM. This 32 gig kit may not be flashy, but it is fast at 6,200 megahertz. And at only $99.99, it's $69 off. And then the perfect thing to pair that with would be this AMD Ryzen 7 7700X. This eight core 16 thread Zen 4 CPU is currently going for only $330 with the promo code, bringing your total off to $69. Nice. That just happened. I didn't plan for this. 269s on 420, let's go. And that's it. Those are the deals for today. You can find these and more linked to the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brad for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. <laughs> Thanks, Reese. But I think we should stop sharing our Netflix password because I'm gonna have to start paying more for it soon because it's being rolled out by Netflix that in the next few months, they're gonna start cracking down on password sharing here in the United States of America. This is something that they've been doing in other countries. It's rolled out to Canada, New Zealand, Portugal, and Spain recently. Now the US is going to be getting hit in the next few months where you have to set a primary location and you have to go back to that location every 31 days in order for that to be activated, which is very inconvenient for people who are away for work reasons for more than an entire month. Additionally, it's not quite clear how this would work if somebody is in an RV situation. If you got like the new Starlink roaming RV version and you're driving around watching 
Netflix all the time. Is it just based on the fact that your Wi-Fi stays the same name or does it need to have the same IP with the ISP? It's not quite clear how Netflix is gonna resolve all of that, but they did say that they're quite pleased with how it's being rolled out in Canada and that their paid membership base is now larger than prior to the launch of paid sharing. So more people are signing up for Netflix, even if several people are threatening to cancel. Let me know if this changes how you use it, but Netflix trying to change at least the ad supported tier going from 720p resolution all the way up to 1080p, which is actually a pretty decent increase in case you wanted the basic with ads version, which is cheaper than the regular Netflix. However, it comes in at the same price that Netflix used to be. So we're just back on the same circle of everything's ad supported. You can't get away from ads ever for anything whatsoever, except for this today's episode of Hot News. We didn't have an ad in today's video, but I'm gonna do a quick ad for Netflix's Quickster, or at least their DVD rental business, which they tried to rebrand to Quickster a few years ago. That quickly got killed, and now they're shutting down the DVD rental service with them shipping out their final disc on September. 29th, 2023. They also revealed a few stats about the service. The first DVD ever shipped was Beetlejuice. On March 10th, 1998, they shipped over 5.2 billion discs. The most popular title was The Blind Side, which does make sense. That was like late 2000s, early 2010s, back when everybody still kind of had in transition away from DVDs or into Blu-rays or anything like that, and it was a hit movie. So it makes sense that like, that would have been the pinnacle of DVD rentals. And they've had 40 million subscribers over the year. The thing that I learned that was very interesting here is that they own DVD.com. I haven't gone to that in forever. I had Netflix DVD service way back when in the early 2010s. Haven't used it in quite some time, just been streaming everything. Let me know your favorite memory of Netflix's DVD rental service down below in the comments. And my favorite memory of the past is all this non-AI stuff that we have to deal with because now it's getting even more complicated because over the weekend, not the weekend, the artist, but it actually involves the weekend, the artist, there was a song that came out that had a AI generated version of Drake and The Weeknd. It essentially came out of nowhere and took the musical world by storm on short form content as well as everywhere else. But now it looks like there's a lot of copyright and DMCA issues that are happening with Universal Music Group, who is the record label of those two artists and making it so that they're against the generative AI saying that they essentially own the vocal patterns of these two artists. And the fact that it was used in the training model is not how it should be. And that they want to protect the artist through copyright copyright law, which as we've been seeing from everything else is probably not robust enough to deal with this case. But UMG actually has enough power that they got it taken down from all of the music platforms as well as YouTube and TikTok, which it got taken down from YouTube, at least in a statement by somebody from YouTube that it was based on a sample that was in the video and not the actual generative AI vocals that were in it. And then it was re-uploaded without that sample put into the song. So the song still exists on YouTube, but it's gonna create this interesting issue where UMG wants to say that it has a copyright claim over this, but because it's user generated content, they don't necessarily have the ability to have YouTube take it down unless it's actually using something that UMG created. And as we all know, you can't have a copyright on something that doesn't have human origin, at least here in the United States. So this is standing on fuzzy legal gray area where it's not quite clear where this is gonna be coming through. UMG, Getty Images, and a bunch of other publishers of data around the world are trying to fight against all of this data data being used for AI, but then you've got companies like Microsoft, like Google, like everybody else who's making these models saying that all of the data that's out there is fair use because we're creating something new. It's generation and so it's transformative and we can actually use it to our heart's content, which we're just gonna keep coming into these issues. It's gonna get resolved in these massive legal battles. Obviously companies like Universal Music Group have a huge incentive to make sure that they're profiting off of everything that even resembles the sound of an artist. And then all of these AI companies have an incentive to try to sell their services by creating things that you couldn't otherwise create before. And it's gonna create a weird world to live through over the next little bit. And one of the questions that I keep going back to when it comes to things like AI generation in Bing, in Google, what happens when you stop driving traffic to the people who create the content that's helping to drive the answers on your AI? If you're pulling from their data and using that to give people the answer, they are no longer getting paid based off of the clicks that you were servicing them with. And so you dry up the pool of information to actually publish that actually is feeding your neural net. So what happens when your answer and the way you provide it is so good that you lost the ability to get people paid for the ability to give the answer to you in the first place? 
Don't know. Lots of weird situations going on, but Intel trying to prepare for the weird situations of the future where the data center chips are just gonna consume a heckin' ton of power. They're looking into new advanced cooling technology for things up to 2,000 watts of cooling for their next generation chips. So they're investigating a whole bunch of different areas where they can help figure out heat dissipation in server environments. They've already partnered with companies like Ferrara with their AirJet, which is gonna help in ultrabook situations because it's an AirJet solid state cooler that can reduce the thickness of the laptop and help to more passively dissipate heat. But things that Intel are looking into for the server environment are 3D vapor chambers that are shaped in coral situations or air jets that help to remove heat in a little bit more of a controlled manner using water on the hot spots on the chip. It's something that Intel needs to look into, especially as they're looking to release, what was it, 334 core, something like that in Xeon that's gonna consume 500 watts at stock. It's gonna be crazy, especially we had that 1900 watt CPU that Elmore Labs overclocked recently. It doesn't look like it's gonna slow down, but Nvidia looks like they're slowing down on the GPU prices because it's being found out that all of the graphics cards that Nvidia has released lately are getting price drops. This was talked about in yesterday's episode of Hot News that Nvidia has been in talk with AIB partners to drop the 4070 price by about $50 by issuing rebates to those AIB partners. And now it looks like we're also getting price drops on the higher end cards like the 4090, which was found on new egg for $1,550 or $50 below MSRP. Similar situation going on with the 4080. You can find it for $1,149, several versions under that $1,200 MSRP. Even one like this Gigabyte Eagle OC that had a $20 promo code being $1,189 to drop it a little bit more. So it looks like there's a lot of retail price droppings that are going on on the consumer side of graphics cards. It looks like Nvidia might start to taper down how much they're trying to consume out of us, but it does look like that they don't really need to care about consumers too much because there's a new price target that came out by HSBC, which is a bank that is trying to target where Nvidia stock should fall. And they increased it to $355 per share, which is 30% higher where they are currently, specifically because of the AI market, saying that they think that Nvidia's got the stranglehold on the market, the earning upsides are there, the higher valuation is absolutely deserved. These chips cost 20 times what the retail versions are gonna be. They don't really have a whole lot of competition. And so Nvidia's profit margins are gonna go through the roof. Their amount of total sellable consumer customers are gonna go down, but it doesn't matter because businesses, AI companies are gonna be buying them foot over mouth. We've already seen Elon Musk pick up 10,000 for Twitter. OpenAI is committed to purchasing 30,000 GPUs from Nvidia. And when you and I can't play our video games because the 4070 costs $100 too much, they'll just balk at us and say, hey, we don't care. <laughs> That's what it looks like at least. So you're just gonna have to go back to AMD and start working with the 780M iGPU because Nvidia is not gonna sell you a discrete graphics. You gotta use integrated, my friends. That was a callback to the beginning of hot news. And I'm gonna call you back tomorrow for more hot news here on this channel. Bye.